Well, hi everybody, this is Gibby. I'm over here at the Zion Benton Public Library. It's uh, September 28th, Thursday, 2023. And they're gonna have people in here talking about adding on to the Waukegan Airport. I worked for IDOT back in the late 90s and early through the 2000s. And they'd always talked about, cause that's the state highway, Green Bay. So I'm gonna carry you to hear what they have to say. So let's go on inside and see what they have to say. It's an expansion. They're going to have a longer runway 
more acres to the airport. So they're expanding is what they're doing. The seven, a new 7,000 foot runway will replace the existing runway, as I mentioned. There will be new taxiways, and then there's something called runway safety areas, which are extensions at both ends of the runway. That's something that you need in case a plane either lands short or overruns the runway. Um, but there's an alternative to that, which we'll get into later. It's something called Engineered Material Resting System, or EMAS. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Estimated cost is $186 million to do this uh, expansion. Um, they're anticipating a lot of federal and state funds for most of the project. Um, they won't say yet exactly how they're gonna handle the local portion and bill. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the financing later. Um, they're estimating that it take, will take three years to do this entire project, but we'll just note it's not quite the same, but in, in Kenosha, they uh, rebuilt the runway and extended by 1,100 feet in one construction season. Um, and some aircraft can operate during construction. In fact, when they built it the last time I was flying and we literally took off and landed on the taxi strip. Jets can't do that, but little planes can. So what, what do they need for this expansion? Well, first of all, they want 52 acres of our public's forest reserve land. Um, the airport has offered to build the trail uh, in part for an agreement to sell the acres. Um, and so what, what happened, what's already happened is the Forest Reserve agreed to a memorandum of agreement. It's non-binding, saying indicating that they might sell it under the right terms, but they haven't said for sure yes or for sure no, but it's just something so that so the airport would proceed further. Down the road, the Forest Reserve will have to approve a binding intergovernmental agreement that will include the sale provisions and, and other, other all, all the parts of the agreement that needs to be done. Part of what the airport will also need is 34 residential properties, six businesses, they already own uh, vacant land on the west side of Green Bay Road, so they'll need that. Uh, and what they call navigation easement, which is basically air rights over part of the sports park the Waukegan Sports Park off of Green Bay Road. And then uh, there will also need to be wetlands mitigation because there are wetlands where we're in the Forest Reserve area. Um, and Green Bay Road, they'll have to build an underpass. The, the runway and taxi strip will go over Green Bay Road. This is what it looks like. So it's, it's a little hard to make out, but this is the existing runway right here. So this is the proposed new runway, and because Wadsworth is at an angle to the runway, it's offset a little bit. And right here is Green Bay Road, so this is where it goes over Green Bay Road. And this portion in yellow, that's uh, mostly forest reserve land, that that's what they want to take to, uh, to build this runway. So, and then you'll also see, they also need some land on the other side. You know, a lot of people noticed that uh, earlier this year, they cut a bunch of trees down there. It has nothing to do with the expansion. It's just an area that should be cleared for the existing runway. So what do they do now at the airport? Uh, there's a lot of users that, that use it. There's literally a control tower there. There's a customs office there for international flights. Um, and these are some of, the, some of the jets that can currently operate there. Air Force One, the smaller version of it, it's a 757, came in with President Trump, um, landed there in Waukegan. Um, there's something called a Boeing business jet that's basically a 737 airframe. That can land there currently. They do have some flights with 737s now. Number of corporate jets, Coast Guard and military use it, critical healthcare providers use it, law enforcement or emergency providers. All that is done currently with the 6,000 foot runway. This is some of the destinations from Waukegan now with 6,000 feet. You can see they go to Puerto Rico, the West Coast, uh, London. Um, there's a lot of different places they can, they can actually access currently. And that's just a few of the locations they fly to. Mm -hmm. So, do we really need a 7,000 foot runway? No. Exactly, <laughs> thank you. We'll just cut this part short. <laughs> uh, so, like I mentioned before, the runway is 6,000 feet. 
Midway Airport, which flies commercial jets all day long, their longest runway is 6522. Chicago Executive Airport, which has over 50 corporate jets, has a 5,000 foot runway, that's their longest. And Kenosha, just like as I mentioned, recently extended, it was 5,500 feet, it's now 6,600 feet. So the only reason, and this is straight out of their environmental assessment, um, the draft, is it's basically for corporate use so that they can do long haul flights. That is the reason for for a 7,000 foot runway. That's so that they can take off without having, you know, fly all the way across the Pacific without having to read you. That's, what's that? Yeah, it's, right, we don't. <laughs> corporate users care, but most of us do not care. <laughs> so, um, that is the reason, this is, these two statements are right out of the environmental assessment, and so it's also not required by the FAA. <coughs> they do some calculations, they send it in the FAA, the FAA has concurred with 7,000 feet. The FAA does not require 7,000 feet, and it's not part, really part of the safety requirements. So, how did they, how did they determine 7,000? Well, what they do um, is they follow an FAA process for calculation, and so they determine what is what, what's called a critical aircraft, and in this particular case for our area, it, it was a Gulfstream G550. It's a good size commercial jet, 91,000 pounds at full weight, and uh, so if you look at a warm day, a, a jet, you know, all planes, if it's warm, they don't perform as well as when it's cold. So if it's warm, it takes you longer to ascend, you need a longer runway, everything else. So um, basically, they look at July average temperature, 82 degrees. So the determination for 7,000 feet was this G550, fully loaded, 91,000 pounds, at 82 degrees, they need 7,000 feet. But it looks like with 85% full tanks, and then that, that's a, a jet that has a range of 7,700 miles. So that's why they want the 7,000 feet. With 85% full tanks, so that'll give you 85% of 7,700 miles, the 6,000 foot runway is adequate. So there's only a few flights that really need this longer runway. So. The other thing is that the draft environmental assessment does not identify how many flights are needed. Um, so if we look at the environmental assessment that was done for Kenosha, when they extended their runway, it's basically the same altitude, same design temperatures. Um, when they did their calculations, now the mix of jets is a little different. They tend to run a little smaller than the Waukegan jets. Um, but basically they figured at 60% and 90% full fuel tanks. And instead of the 100% that they used for Waukegan. That was the same calculation process, but they determined that they did not need a uh, runway that long. Um, they also reviewed in their environmental assessment um, flight operations like over 500 miles, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000. Unfortunately, they only went to 2,000 miles, but on this Gulfstream um, G550 or N400 series, there was only 10 flights out of 206 that went over 2,000 miles. So that's only 5% of, of this jet's flights went even over 2,000. So that, you know, they could do three, four, 5,000 miles with the 6,000 um, feet. So it's very, very limited number of operations would need 7,000 feet for the runway. So, but also, so what do they forecast in terms of flight operations? If you look at it, um, their, their uh, consultant is projecting that over a 20-year period of time, you know, when they did this report, 18% of the flights out of Waukegan were jets. They're projecting that it'll go to 28%. That's a big increase in jet operations. That's over 20 years. In 10 years, they're predicting a 55% increase in jet flight, just jet flight. So, 7,400 cent is operations, and operations of takeoff or landing. So 7,470 in the baseline year when they did this report to 11,598. So that's a huge increase in jet operations. 
which gives us more noise, more emissions in this area. So if we look at the conclusions from these reports, the longer runway is only needed for extended flights, extended distance. It's a limited number, likely a limited number of flights that need this longer runway. Like I said, they don't do data on how far they're flying, but it's likely to be a limited number of flights. They currently can fly continental United States and, and some foreign destinations. Um, and like I mentioned, the draft environmental assessment does not break down flights by distance. So there's very few users that need the 7,000 foot runway, and it's not part of the safety program. So in other words, the pilot has to look at the runway they've got. They've got to make sure that their aircraft can operate within that distance. And the other thing that I mentioned before, the engineer material resting system, that cuts the required length. So a runway safety area is 1,000 feet at each end, which means they really need 9,000 total feet. If you go to EMAS, which is like a truck runaway, so if, if you go into it, you sink. Just like a, a truck, you see more in the mountains, but if a truck's going down, the brakes fail, they go into this runaway, and they sink and stop very rapidly. That's what Midway Airport uses, because 6522 is not a lot of cushion for, for the larger jets. So they do not consider using EMAS as the primary target. They do talk about EMAS, but they don't really consider that as an option in the draft environmental assessment. So, how does this impact our community here? Um, Zion, Beach Park, um, parts of Waukegan, Wadsworth. Um, so, and I, I'll show you a map on this in a minute, but we get some very low flying jets, and I, I'll show you why in a minute. We also have nearby schools. Um, the draft environmental assessment does not really um, look at schools that are close to the airport. Um, the, the EPA, interestingly enough, su suggested that this draft environmental assessment does not adequately determine if there's disproportionate impacts to low income and minority populations like Zion living near the airport and if the project benefits potentially off site and more affluent demographics, which is likely. So, um, in terms of noise, it, they don't look at, like I mentioned, sensitive locations like schools, churches that are currently located. Um, outside this 65 decibel. So what they look at is uh, uh, what they call 65 decibel PNL, which is day night levels, and it's an average number. So, and, and I'll show you a little bit more on that in a minute. Um, the draft EA only looks at the average day night sound level for our area, and I'll, I'll show you how that turned out. There's no noise abatement programs proposed or Chicago, like Chicago regular airport has, has that, for example. Josh, I'm sorry, can you yes. speak up a little bit? A little more? Okay, yes, sorry. You. Okay, so th this is, so jets often, I would say most of the time, use ILS, instrument landing systems when they come in. So when they're coming in um, from the northeast, uh, there's a, a marker beacon right here that they use to identify where they're at and then they come in on a glide slope. That's a three degree glide slope, it's very common. And uh, so what happens is, this four miles out, they drop 300 feet per mile. So right here, here's Shiloh Park, very close to downtown area, that jet's only 600 feet above ground at this point. Right here, they're only 300 feet above ground. So when you start here, as they're coming in the city, 900 feet above ground. So we're getting a lot of low flying jets because that's how they come in. They come in on a long final approach to land. And uh, it, it can be the reverse too. They can go the other way, come in from Wadsworth. But what happens a lot, this is more the prevailing wind. So when they're taking off, Wadsworth is getting jets that are, have very high power to take off. So they get a lot of that noise and Zion's getting this landing approach. But it can reverse as well. So here's some of the schools. So this is the proposed, this is the proposed runway. Here are some of the nearby schools that are around, and there's more, but those are several that are very close by. And then here's the sports park right here, and then here's the forest reserve that they want 
They want the 52 acres. Yes. Thank you. So this is, uh, whoops, I think it went one again. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you go back and tell us what those other colors mean? I'm sorry. Okay. So that was a. Uh, this one? Okay. Go back. No. Go back to the other map? Yeah. Okay. Sure. This is an overlay, um, an organization that we work with, Open Lands, did this. So the different colors represented different things. Like this would be like a zone around the runway right here. Um, this, this part here is where they will want forest reserve land. So it's kind of like these yellow are properties that they need to, to buy. So, with the yellow as properties they need to buy. Yeah, in this area here, I think this and up in here is what we think. I don't know if they've definitely identified that, but you know they're talking about 3,300. So, so they will need more homes. Um, for a minority of just. For yes, a uh, minority of homes. Exactly, because all the general aviation, you know, the propeller planes and stuff, they don't need a lot of runway. And most of the jets don't need it. And even the larger jets, you know, if they don't go with full fuel tanks, they don't need a lot of them. So, sorry, I'm going to get another question. Because they're going to be bringing planes, are they not going to require your airspace, like around Aurora? Yeah. Or you have to go higher than the right way? Well, there's a control tower in Waukegan. I have to admit, I don't know all the specifics of how that works. I'm flying because my husband is flying. Yeah. I don't know if we have to go. Lower or yeah, I was like an upside down layer cake. I think, I believe some of that has changed um, because they have better um, systems. You know, people are running GPS now. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure they have to coordinate with O'Hare airspace if in certain areas or certain altitudes. Right, so they might have to change their air pattern in order to accommodate and that would be going to be more places. Potentially. But potentially, but I can't say for sure on that. Doug, can you repeat the question? That you okay, the thinking. question was, uh, well, does O'Hare Airport impact how they would fly out of Waukegan? Uh, I'm not entirely certain about that. Um, it used to be, like I said, it used to be like an upside down layer cake, so it was a very narrow band or very close to, um, to O'Hare Airport, and then the higher the altitude, it kept going out like this. So literally part of the air, uh, O'Hare control airspace really comes almost to Waukegan Airport at the time. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly how they do it now, but there is a control tower in Waukegan, and I'm sure if they need to coordinate with O'Hare or Aurora for, um, um, you know, once you're out of O'Hare airspace, um, I'm sure they do that. Plus, plus uh, we missed the part about how they might have to retract the plane so it doesn't go into the airspace, which means that all the plane will come over neighborhoods more in order to Possibly, but um, I think there's probably ways to do that. Flying over stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's a little different now, so I got to move along. I think. Did you have a question? What's the longest runway of all that? I think it's it's definitely over 10,000 feet. I maybe 11 or 12. I'm not positive exactly. They have some very long runways because they're very long jets. Can you talk a little bit about the FedEx traffic that currently? Is coming out of Waukegan and how that might be impacted with the. If, okay, so that's an interesting thing. Is there actually FedEx traffic now? No, it's not. Yeah, I believe there is. Okay, because they, the they have said that there would not be any air freight going. Well, I can hear planes come out of there 12 30, 1 30, 2 30 in the middle of the night. It could just be like corporate jets. You know, they can, they can trigger. I'm not used to that. What, what happens is. Uh, when they put in the customs office for the convenience of the corporate executives, if they come in after hours when the airport's closed, they radio ahead and a customs agent drives out to the airport on your tax dollars and mine. And he then lets them get off their plane and go through customs so they don't have to go to O'Hare or Midway or Billy Mitchell. So the ones you're hearing right now at night are probably the corporate jets coming in. However, under the state regulations, if you go to 7,000 feet, you can be considered a commercial airport. They say they would not have FedEx or these others, but once they get 7,000 feet, they could. 
Uh, they, they do charge user fees, those two They do charge a fee. See, I, I want to make it clear. Yeah. There are no Federal Express airplanes coming into the airport right now. But aircraft. I'm just airport. saying, yeah. they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are planes coming in. They're not. I think that there's not should be any conspiracy theory. Right. There either are, or there is, or there isn't. Excuse and right me, now, I wasn't trying to make it. No, no, I just. Conspiracy I just. It was just you, a simple question. I, I thought you made a statement yeah. that there were Federal Express. She just happens to live there and get the money. Well, I live there too, so yeah. I'm just saying. Okay, so, but yes, there are. There can be night flight operations. I, I mean, you used to be able to trigger the. Tower. Before the tower, you, well, the tower's not there all night, so. You can trigger the lights so that you can land. Hey, um, Doug, I think it's an important point to make. They say there won't be FedEx airplanes if there's some on the but there'll be no way to enforce it right. if they change. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. There's no I'm binding agreement. Thank you. Guaranteed. Fed, you can track every FedEx flight. They have call signs like United. Yeah. Track every United flight. I looked up all the FedEx flights for a four-day period. They don't land at any airports. With one way shorter than ten thousand feet. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I don't think I don't think it's reasonable. Why would they come to Waukegan when they go to Rockford, Milwaukee, or Chicago? It would not Minnesota. be a transfer center like Rockford. You know, it's it's just not big enough for that. Rockford's a major hub for air freight. Can I make one more comment? You subscribe to a system called FlightAware.com. And it shows every flight as it comes in and goes out. It's fascinating. My cat loves the little small flights. But we can go back and determine what size planes and who owns them. So if there's ever any questions like that, we can research it and find out. All right. So um, so getting into the sound, like you mentioned, you know, when they when they do the report, this is what they consider, you know, they look at day and night, so it's an average. And this is all they consider really is that there's the sound is at the airport. Um, they, they identified possibly two properties once here, one somewhere up there. That's the only two properties they said were impacted enough by the sound. I, I disagree. I think, you know, it's, we, it's just because we don't get like jets flying over every five minutes. I hear them revving up their engines when they're at the airport from my house. Yes. Can I go to San Francisco this morning? Some jet jockey had his jet going and it shook my house. Oh. Um, uh, by the way, they do have a um, they do have a um, place on their site where you can complain about noise. They said they don't get it. Like so, it does any good. Well, but they don't get any. It, it would help. So if you look at their site, there is a place where you can file a noise complaint or you know, it's not a bad idea. This this is actually Chicago Executive Airport. This is like they have a, what they call a quieter home program. So here's the runway here. You know they've got homes close by on both sides, and they're doing a program for those. But I think we have homes pretty close to the airport too. And as far as I know, and I don't see anything in environmental assessment that they plan to put in place any program like that. So um, <clears throat> go ahead. Is there something? I don't know if they're not in this situation, that if they build something like this, okay, so it's a small meeting now, but once they build it, they're going to solicit for it to become a bigger meeting. Mm -hmm. And is there such a thing that they, they can only use that runway for these bigger jets certain times of the day? Uh, no, not really. Um, but potentially they could put in some restrictions. The question was, would there be any restrictions that they do put in the longer runway or like on late night operations or whatever? Um, you know, I know in, at uh, Chicago Exec, they do have some procedures for pilots that they ask them to follow on certain runways so that it's, it doesn't, it's not quite as impactful to the local community. So um, on, on the emissions for for the for the aircraft, they don't they only look at the emissions at the, at the airport and construction for the new runway. They don't look at the surrounding communities. So interesting comment from the EPA. Um, well, first of all, private jets are about five to 14 times more polluting than commercial jets per passenger. Um, the EPA suggested that they should identify impacts of um, um, 
global warming emissions or you know um, emissions from both no action and a proposed action in 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 light of uh, how it fits in with Illinois climate goals, including the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act that was recently passed a couple years ago. So kind of interesting comment from them there. So here's the um, Waukegan Savannah Forest Reserve. Um, we think it sets a precedent of selling uh, forest reserve land for limited private use. Now it's, it's one thing if there's an intersection being widened or a road or something like that, that's like the common good. Well, lots of people will use those roads, but this is a very limited use and we're selling our public lands for, um, for um, private use, basically. Large corporate jets, long distance corporate jets. Um, also, um, I'll just mention that in 2010, a master plan was approved for Joaquin Savannah, it's still not implemented except for the dog park. You know, we think that this area is an underserved part of, of the county for forest reserves and that they should, this needs to be done um, instead of selling that land. Um, there is, a Rusty Patch Bumblebee is a um, endangered species. Uh, they do identify that it's potentially habitat for that, but there's also other locations and they did not find any active active uh, <coughs> patches of the bees currently, but yeah, it's a potential. Uh, and as we mentioned, it's a loss of wetlands. Um, at the end of the runway, it's gonna be more grass. It's not gonna be prairie grass. It's just gonna be just regular grass, just like the airport is now. Um, and the, air, the Forest Reserve is now proposing a referendum um, that potentially could include trails and restoration at uh, Joaquin Savannah as well as other or more land acquisition around the county. But, you know, I, I just think we've seen a lot of improvements done around the county. There's some of the, some parks that I really like, like Pine Dunes, I go there all the time, but but I still, this land's been there a long time and it hasn't been developed. I'd like, like to see that be a priority with the, with the forest reserves. So why wouldn't they have, have trails so uh, are we talking here about uh, is it like forest area or some forest and some wetlands or is it all primary? What's it, what's well, that the area is? where the land is being proposed currently yeah. has trees, um, probably mostly buckthorn. Oh, yeah. But yeah. under an improvement yeah. plan, it's going to be it would be more likely some wetlands. Um, well, there are wetlands there, so probably be improved wetlands, prairie grasses. You can see this is the plan right here. Yeah. So. Uh, I forget my bearings. Uh, I think this is it down here. So, the, yeah, this this is uh, Green Bay Road. This is York House. So this is the proposed trail to go through. Um, you can see some wetlands here, probably prairie grasses. So there's, there's no trails or anything there now. There's some grass trails that are mowed on more of the western part of it, as far as I know. But it's not it's not a restored it's not restored lands not yet. So. I should probably keep going. That, this is the master plan, conceptual plan, by the way. It goes back to 2010. So here are some of the organizations that are currently opposed to selling <coughs> for reserve lands for expansion, Sierra Club, which I'm part of, Midwest Sustainability, Audubon, Open Lands, Friend of Indian Creek, St. Power Lake County, the Village of Wadsworth that voted against it. Um, we have a Girl Scout troop that's uh, against it, the Chicago Sun-Times did an editorial against it. Um, so here's the next steps coming up. Um, the environmental assessment draft has been reviewed by cooperating agencies and submitted their comments to, to the airport and the FAA. Um, I think they did not really look at alternatives for a shorter runway. Most of the alternatives had a 7,000 foot runway going different directions or using the short runway, all kinds of different things. They did not look at um, the um, shorter EMAS system instead of runway safety area yeah, as a viable you, option. You didn't explain EMAS. I, I did earlier. Did you? But yeah, it's it's like a truck runway. So it's shorter. It's like half the distance of a runway safety area. So that would potentially save some distance. Um, and uh, as we mentioned, uh, 
they have to release the, the assessment draft. It'd be 30 days, and then they'll have a public hearing. Right now, they're talking like a November time frame, but it's been pushed back from July to October, and now November. So we're not sure exactly when it'll be. Uh, once all that's done, public comments are submitted. The FAA would make a final decision. The Forest Reserve would have to complete the intergovernmental agreement, and then, then they'd have to get the funding arranged and, and start the project. So a couple of suggestions we have. Uh, let me just finish. And yeah. then, uh, uh, contact your Forest Reserve board member, which is the same as your county board member. Let them know your vote. Um, you can make public comments at Forest Reserve board meetings. We have a petition back there you can sign. Volunteer with us, join our listserv, uh, letters to the editor, and attend the public hearings as well. So I want to leave time for Bill to speak to, but is there a couple quick questions that we can fill up? Mm -hmm. Start there. Why is the Forest Reserve considered an Uh They felt, most of my opinion of what I think is uh, that the Port Authority, which is part of the, the airport, is part of the Lucky Port Authority, which is a sort of a governmental agency, and they are possibly considering that that's cooperating with another public agency. Gina, do you want to comment on that? Well, they, they can't expand that runway without the property, period. Pardon? Yeah, they, they can't? They can't expand the runway without the 52 acres, period. They know that. So I mean, was that was that yeah. the question? I, I was no, yeah. was, no, that's, was, that's why, the, why why would the Forest Preserve even concern. consider selling preserved land? Their preserved land, the public land. Well, well, it's my understanding that we're going to get other property that we can we can put trails in. We can get opportunities to buy other property as well. So. But you already have it. All right. So it's a fact you can say, wait, 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 there's a question in here. If they, if they did the tunnel uh, for Green Bay Road, they own the property across the street right now. They do. How long a runway could they put in over that without acquiring the forest? Well, that's a good question. I'd like to know that. And I think that's one of the things that they should answer. If they do a parallel runway, they have to offset because Wadsworth is at an angle. If they rebuild in place, but they'd have to close the runway for a period of time, um, you know, they probably would, you know, then it's, then it's not as, as um, offset as much. So it could be a, a, a longer. But it's a good question I think they should answer and I think they should look at it with EMAS. Linda? The elephant in the room seems to be, who's going to pay for this? Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. Well, Bill's going to pay Bill's going to pay for it. Bill yeah. 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 Is there another quick question while Bill's coming? Yeah. So who will benefit from this? Besides the airport itself, who do you think the board? It's corporate. Corporate use. So I mean, no, private, no, 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 these little propeller aircraft no. need that runway. It's larger corporate jets for extended range. That's the thing. It's like that jet has a 7,700 mile range. That's why they want 7,000 foot. Also, I just have a, a point that question. Midway Blunt's runway is Midway or Pretend you're in a lounge waiting for your flight. <laughs> now, pretend you're at Waukegan Airport and you're a corporate executive in a lounge waiting for your flight. You wouldn't have all these stinky people in the room with you. There'd be maybe four or five people, and you would get in a big lounge chair, and somebody will fly you 6,500 miles so you can go to a business meeting. But if we can just extend the runway and take some forest preserve land, and ruin my pickleball courts and put kids at the schools getting the noise like these little kids back here, then they can fly an extra thousand miles to Asia and they don't have to be in a room like we're in. The county board member is right. Those are not FedEx flights. I went out there and watched flights for a night. It's really exciting. Uh, let me tell you, it's like snipe hunting when you're in Boy Scouts, okay? <laughs> but here's the deal. When they built quietly, by taking money from the Harbor Fund, not from the Airport Fund, 
a big facility for customs so that the executive class, these three to 5% of their flights, didn't have to go to Billy Mitchell, Midway, or O'Hare, or Rockford. They then come in flights later at night. The difference is, and I'd invite any of you to join me at Bevere Park in Waukegan to play pickleball, we have to basically stop the pickleball game when the jets take off, not when the regular planes take off. There are 400 kids going to school even closer than we are in the pickleball court. The good news is I know it's coming and I can usually score a point. Uh, now, here's, here's the reality. Now, you're not from Waukegan, a few of you are, but the Port Authority has quietly used an obscure law that passed a couple years ago so that our county board members who are here kind of got hoodwinked and so did a lot of other people. It's called the Alternate Revenue Bond General Obligation Bond Law. It allows the Port Authority without a referendum to put the property taxpayers of Waukegan as those guaranteeing the bonds. Now, if for some reason there's not enough money from planes landing or from gas sales, then they can't make the bond payment. The county clerk will extend a tax levy currently of $1,050,000 ,050, a year on the residents of Waukegan and they'll never knew it came through 2038. This project, the Port Authority's latest myth is the federal government's gonna pay all $186 million. I got three bridges I can sell you for half that amount. The reality is the federal requirement is a minimum of 5% of the local share. So let's just make it 9.3 million. If they do 9.3 million as an alternate general obligation bond, the Waukegan taxpayers are now on the hook for $2 million a year in bond payments. And the reason they have to use alternate bonds is they don't have enough revenue to sell revenue bonds, which are the kind that don't put your taxpayers at risk. There's three kinds of bond issues. General obligation, like the ones that finance schools. That means all the taxpayers are on the hook to pay for that building. Number two is a revenue bond. That's what they used to do sewer plants. That's what they used to do airports in the old days. That's what they do for these football stadiums, i.e. Soldier Field, that used to have a professional football team. <laughs> My brother's here in his Packers hat. It's very offensive to me. But the reality is they have a team we don't, okay? But the third hybrid was created about 20 years ago that you can take a revenue bond pretend you have enough money to make the payments from other than property taxes, but then you can just spread it on the property tax rolls and hope that you have enough money every October to make the next year's payments, or boom, the local taxpayers get hit with it. They didn't tell the county board members this, so if I were going to run against one of these nice ladies, I might run saying they voted to raise the taxes on the people of Waukegan, and they'd say, well, we technically did, and I'd say, well, you technically did. That's the problem, is this has all been done in a black box, and we don't know. This family in the back has a house, maybe one of the 30 houses they'll take. Maybe. They need a bedroom. Should they go spend $20,000 to add on to that house? These folks live there. Should they take care of their house? This has all been done quietly. We have asked time and again to debate or discuss this with the Port Authority Board. They don't want to get in the same room with us. The reality is this is not what was agreed to when I was mayor in the 1970s and 1980s. We were told, and I helped put a lot of money into the airport, and I built the harbor, that they would always run on their own revenues. We were told they would never go with the big jets, just the regular size corporate jets. They now have jets for several of our corporations that can fly 6,000 miles without a stop. And we can't give them enough. There is an alternative. If they want to build a big corporate airport, build it out, you know, get rid of, uh, what's that place called? Independence Grove. 
See how the folks out there like it. How about Ryerson Wood? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I get very aggravated about this as having been to Mayor of Waukegan, the senator here. Uh, this is not necessary except to take care of maybe a hundred corporate big shots. God love them. They provide jobs in Lake County. They have nice facilities in Lake County. I've watched them abandon Waukegan. Outboard Marine had eight or 9,000 employees. They ran away from us and left us pollution. Uh, Johns Manville employed 8,000. They ran away from us and left us a pile of asbestos that can't be used. <clears throat> U.S. Steel ran away from us and left us polluted land on the lakefront. I think we should be good to corporations. We need jobs. We want to keep jobs. But we should not pander to 3, 4, 5 percent that are saying they need something that is just going to make their life that much more convenient. They can have a hell of a nice airport. It is great. They really don't need this. And in the long run, if things do go bump in the night, but their line is just tonight at the fall school, an hour ago, the airport authority director said, don't worry, the federal government's going to pay for the whole thing. That is not the truth. Uh, we, it is not a safety issue. There's been four accidents out of Waukegan Airport since the 1950s. None of them on the airport site. The worst one, some of us will remember Bobby Collins from WGN. It was about six blocks from here. And coming in over the city of Zion. Now, the Waukegan taxpayers are dear to my heart, having been a mayor. So the reality is I could go into the whole tax issue. But you know what? There's a few Waukegan people here. Actually, back when I was mayor, we got more complaints out of Zion and Beach Park about the airport than we did Waukegan because it was kind of built to go from Zion and Beach Park out yeah. to Gurney. Yeah. Right. Uh, already in Gurney, they've got that ETO stuff that they're trying to kill people yeah. with. And now they want to put this a couple of miles away. It's just a bad idea. That's my sermon. I'm sorry. I was supposed to talk about financial. I apologize. <laughs> Well, they won't tell us. They won't give me their audit. Do you know that it is now September 28th? Yep. They've not released their audit from last year. What I can tell you from the audit from the year before I got from the state controller, the airport lost $400,000. Oh, <laughs> and in order to pay for this customs office, they took 400000 from the port, from the harbor boat owners, they don't know, and they gave a no interest loan to the airport. Nice. Now the reality is, I think the airport breaks even. They're just bad finance managers. Uh, but I know a lot of pilots. I don't know if there's any local pilots here. Yeah. I have a cousin who's a pilot. He's now got his plane in Kenosha that he built. Because Waukegan gas prices were too expensive. <laughs> and even in Kenosha, he flies further out to gas up because he can save an extra half a buck or a buck a gallon. So they are having a problem generating revenue because their overhead's gotten too high. The, the current runway is safe. Uh, it'll probably have to be rebuilt in maybe eight or 10 years. How could Kenosha build a 6,600 foot runway for $19 million in seven months and we need three years and $186 million to build the same runway? Something is rotten in Denmark. They should just stop it, live within their footprint, give these people an answer, stop being so secretive. Somebody else, I have another hand up here, I'm sorry. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. A different question, please. Um, a lot of the environmental stuff, so back in the 90s, when <coughs> I was writing for an environmental magazine. Jim, please speak and a little loudly. We'll repeat it for you. Oh, and you. the um, airplanes would release gas over. If they were in trouble, they would drop gas over the lake. No, um, this was when they were coming in for land. Yes. That they would release whatever gas was left over or something to. Yes. And there were a lot of complaints around O'Hare about that. Do 
these planes do that? And no. are they going to take off? I doubt very much that they do that. If a plane was in tremendous distress, but those are the big planes at O'Hare, if there's a problem, they take them out into a big circle and they reduce the load so that they can be lighter when they land. But that so wouldn't happen. The question was, do they release gas before landing? Um, now Steve's a corporate, was a corporate pilot, what we just say Steve? No, I, just what he said. Yeah, it's, it's only, only in an emergency, emergency, saving the life of everybody on that area. <clears throat> they don't do it, just, gas is expensive. It's just like you, it's just like you said, if one would get better mileage, you might dump some of my gas in me, I don't carry it with you. It's but they don't at, do it. At that time, they were saying that it was a standard practice no. for lightening it, for making the no. landing structure. It, it might have been for a safety then of lightning, yeah. but the reality is these planes are pretty much, the, first of all, the small planes don't have to worry about it at all. They use the little runway, the 3,000 yeah. foot runway. The big ones, unless it was a tremendous problem, Okay. Uh, and if they did, yeah. unfortunately, they'd take it out over the lake most likely. They won't want to lose that money. Um, it's strictly the emergency. No, it question. does evaporate, but it is. We, I've never heard of that being done here. Okay, did you have a question? Or? No, it's no. been answered. Okay, Al? I'm, I'm always heard of Waukegan trying to track some kind of, uh, I guess, endangered. They do have a um, military, um, they have one hangar that has a bunch of old military planes that they refurbish and operate out of there. Um, I'm not aware that. I'm, I'm talking about No, we're called, a, you're, you're talking about, we're called a reliever airport. A reliever airport is one that if there's a problem, say at Milwaukee or here or something else, they could land here in an emergency, but, but they're not doing it for maintenance. But. We do maintain our corporate fleet at Waukegan Airport. Uh, Abbott has a hangar, Abby has a hangar, Baxter might have their seven. I, I thought it was some kind of, like if there's some kind of plane that's in trouble that they would like direct it to Waukegan. But Only if it was case. a real, I mean. It's more like if somebody's running out of gas. It, or if there was lightning problems that, that it'd be more DuPage. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if there was a problem at DuPage, and a problem maybe at Rockford, they might direct a smaller plane to Kenosha or Waukegan. Yeah, with the weather issue. Only, yeah, only for extreme situations. Yeah, uh, Larry? Um, so earlier in one of the presentation slides, it said there's going to be a 55% increase in jet operations in 10 years from 7,470 baseline per year to 11,598. Yeah. Operations per year. Is, now, is that, is that re referring to this additional kind of traffic that this right. with the, would generate with this expanded? They anticipate way? more jet traffic with a bigger one. That's from their own study. What they, what, what Larry just asked is they're talking about almost a 50% increase from 7,000 to 11,000 corporate jet flights coming out of Waukegan over the next 10 years. Uh, that would be. We will get some of that growth anyway, uh, but this would be the extra length of the runway would make it a bit more attractive to maybe some other corporations to bring their planes in here. Uh, but those are the planes that make the noise when the kids are in school. And, and the stuff. pollution too. Yeah. The pollution, but they here's part of the problem. They've overborrowed at the airport, so they need more income at the airport. The little guys are buying their gas in Wisconsin or Western Illinois. So they need to create a market to create more money. So they say if the feds will give us free money, then we can make more money bringing in more jets, louder, more pollution. It, it's a catch-22. It, 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 it was never intended to be that, uh, at least going back from the 50s all the way through the 85 when I was there. And, and Adeline Jo Karras, her name was on the door out here, when she was in the House, I was in the Senate, we got money for the Waukegan Airport to, to expand this 6,000 foot runway because it was going to be good for Abbott, Abbey, well before Abbey, Abbott and some of the other corporations. 
but it was never intended to go across Green Bay Road. That was never a thought. The, the Forest Preserve part of it is more bizarre. I'm a volunteer at the Forest Preserve. Those 55 trees absorb a ton of CO2 a year. Now that might sound weird, but trees are what are keeping us alive. Yeah. We should not be in a position of cutting down trees. And I don't want to pick on these two ladies. It's not their fault, but the reality is we could sure as heck, when I was mayor of Waukegan, we had to, the mayor of North Chicago and I, had to almost threaten to go on strike to get the green belt. Because the Forest Preserve District always managed to buy land in Highland Park, in Libertyville, in Wakanda. Uh, they didn't, other than yours up there, which Van Patten was the first one, we could never get anything. And they always said to us, well, you've got Foss Park, you've got Bowen Park, you've got Belvedere Park, and we said, well, we're paying for those. So they could have, 15 years ago, developed this land like they should have for the, everyone else. We are a community of Waukegan that is over 60% minority. And the reality is we have about one-third to one-half the income of the rest of Lake County. We have a larger minority population. And unfortunately, there is this insensitivity to, well, they're the other. They can deal with less forest preserve land. They can deal with that. And it's not fair. We have the most magnificent beach on Lake Michigan. Uh, we don't get any help from the county for that. Uh, we've got the best dune system on Lake Michigan, I'd say. We don't get any help from the county in that. So part of it is, it's, there's a fairness issue here. The Forest Preserve District, 10, 15 years ago, prior to you guys, would have been fair. The Savannah would have been fully developed and no one would even consider giving away the land. That's just the reality. And by the way, my wife and I lead tours in the Forest Preserve every two weeks or so. So if you want to go to a Forest Preserve, look for a Sunday stroll. We'll take you out there and teach you the cool things. Marina, did you have a question? Uh, could you speak a little bit to the mysterious airport authority? Um, they obviously don't feel like they're accountable to us. Who actually appoints them? The, the mayor appoints four, Mayor of Waukegan. <coughs> the governor appoints three. Unfortunately, right now, four of the seven members don't live in Waukegan, so if there's ever a tax, they won't pay it anyway. Uh, way back in the 50s, the publisher of the New Sun, who promoted the creation of the airport, and the Johnson Motors, which outboard Green, U.S. Steel, the people that were pushing creation of the airport, they didn't trust that the people of Waukegan were capable of making these decisions themselves. So they created the three governor's appointees uh, to make sure that we had people a little smarter than we were. Uh, and so that kind of got in the way of this. Uh, in some ways, if I had in a perfect world right now, if, if the county wants this and Abbott wants it, right, walking in a check for about $2 billion, uh, they can sell you the airport, you can do whatever you want, and we can finally begin to get something done in Waukegan. You know, we can't get a state highway. Grand Avenue is a state highway. Belvedere Road is a state highway. We can't get a pothole patch. But they're going to spend $80 million building an overpass for airplanes on Green Bay Road. And the only airplanes that will do that are six or eight corporate jets. Really? I, I got to calm down. Do you have a question over here? Another packer. You know, he has a good point. The question is making Green Bay Road four lanes from basically walking into the Wisconsin state line. That was proposed when I was in my 20s. Uh, I'm pushing 80. I'm probably going to get criticized by run for president for being too old. But the reality is now they're delaying that project, which actually got approved by the legislature, saying, well, we have to wait about this 60 or $80 million underpass for the airplane. Right. They should just go ahead, drop this plan, exactly. spend the money upgrading the current runways, and widen Green Bay Road. Yeah. Nobody in our group is opposed to that at all. That we think it should be done tomorrow. We'll never see that happen if this thing goes through. 
Well, they'll have to to build the overpass for the jets. Right. Yeah. They have to drop the road. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they, uh, question right here. Well, the 10 years is their number. Yeah. Well, it's it's their best estimate. I'm sorry to that. Right, exactly. But it's, it's their best estimate on growth. I mean, they look at a bunch of different factors. Um, it's a There's a whole appendix on what's called forecast, where they look at all kinds of different things, and that's their estimate. Because 10 years from now, we're in the same room. Because now they want another 100. Well, here, here's, here's the deal. It's, it's all about money. Okay. Why did they put five lanes on the tollway? Where are they at? One at a time. That fourth lane, it lasted about eight months. You're talking to Okay. I used to be on the tollway board. I can answer that for you privately. Uh, add a lane, you add traffic. You add a lane, you add traffic. No, here's the deal. They want to do this to increase revenue at the airport. So you're right. If if they can get 9% corporate jets, let's go to 13% corporate jets. If we've got 200 hangers, let's go 300 hangers. Yes. So you're 55%. Yes, you're right. Yes. So, I have one other question. Uh, if, uh, you said earlier, even if they sell you, the federal government is paying this $186 million, no matter what they say, Still responsible for, you said, 5%. Well, the, the law says 5% has to be locally funded. So 5% of 186 million is 9.3 million. Uh, but the reality is the county board members probably get stuck with some of the costs too because Blanchard Road or York House Road is a county road and they want to relocate that. And you can bet they're going to, the same way they're going to renege on developing the forest preserve, they're going to renege and say, well, we just need a little bit of money. I can show you 15 places that need underpasses in Lake County to stop congestion and could save us a lot of pollution. And then they would spend it all here. Give this guy his four lanes. He and I might not be around another 50 years. I'd like to see it before that, because then I could drive faster to go to Wisconsin to see a pro football team. Or they can drive faster to come down when the Bears come back in power. I think I saw a question way in the back. Well, like, you know how they've been presenting this all about, like, safety, and then they're saying that they, that's kind of, you know, like, stretching, a, you know, like, a good story or whatever for selling, but then they say that they can't, that the airport runway needs to be um, updated or fixed or replaced, and that they can't operate and, re and fix it at the same time, so, I mean, and then I guess the other question I have is, like, I feel like, it's frustrating like hearing talk about this stuff, but you don't really have any idea. So I appreciate you guys doing this forum tonight because as someone that lives very close to the airport, um, it's frustrating not knowing and then for them not to feel like they have any accountability to people that live in the area. It's very disappointing, you know what I mean? To be like yeah. in this circumstance. Bill, yeah, let me answer. Yeah. So on your question, so the 7,000 foot is not the safety issue. Okay. There are things like runway safety areas or the EMAS we discussed, the distance of the taxi strip to the runway, there's, you know, that runway has a little bit of a U shape. They like to have a little flatter. So those are more safety issues, but the runway length itself is not a safety issue. Okay, so that's not an issue at all. But then can they, could they arguably fix things without having to do this like, could they fix things without having to shut the air? Well, that's what, one reason why they want to build the parallel runway so they can keep the other runway open while they're building that. Um, but they could rebuild that runway in place, but they'd have to close that runway for Kenosha a closed for one year. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Kenosha closed it for a year, directed the bigger planes elsewhere, some to Waukegan, and then completed their project. In fact, the company that did it called Michaels Construction out of Central Wisconsin, they received an award because they finished it sooner than they were expected to do. Oh, right. So the reality is they could, I, I can't understand why it would take that long, other than we get into this airplane overpass and 
rerouting roads. On site, they could do the whole thing in a year. Okay. Yeah, why are they, they're telling us it's three years. If they can't do the expansion, it's going to take three years. Because so it makes you understand. more panicky. I, I, I think, yeah, yeah I, I'd like to see more on that because, it, yeah, Kenosha did, a, they rebuilt the runway and lengthened 1,100 feet in one year. And for 19 <coughs> So I saw, there's a lot of questions here. Um, I saw notice about this meeting in an article in the Daily Herald. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where else was it advertised? Uh, Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Ye
I might be the only person in the public that's ever attended one because they meet on the airport site, no one pays attention, they're completely out of the view of the public. These two ladies were required to read 1,100 page draft environmental study in the, their offices because they wouldn't let the board members take it home. Was now that's just crazy. Almost 1,300 bills. I, yeah, and I, I, I even get to War and Peace. I couldn't read that in two hours. <laughs> Larry? Yeah, real quick, um, the mayor said that, um, that well, I heard somewhere said that, okay, that, that there's there's still discussion that the EPA, whatever, they didn't do any kind of noise abatement for this current airport they're proposing. But, there, but, then, but then I heard in the presentation that this Chicago Executive Airport has all the people to pass through the airport around for noise. So what the mayor was saying earlier, it's sort of against some of that narrative. So we don't want noise in our airport, but, but, but they can have the noise over there in Waukee. So yeah. the draft, but there's The draft environmental assessment does not include anywhere that I could find anything about noise abatement for nearby. You want to hear the best story? My wife goes online to get the map for the noise pattern at Waukegan Airport. It took about six minutes. I then contacted the airport and said, can I have a copy of the noise map for the Waukegan Airport? <laughs> they said, we can't find it. It hasn't been done for many years. We don't have one. I said, would you like my wife to send you one? <laughs> uh, so I mean, this is, this is the thing that makes me almost insane. It's like, come on. Yes. Is that a question? It's kind of the obvious. It's a 20 minute drive to Kenosha. Why don't they just land in Kenosha? Kenosha is a little narrower. I mean, but but during like, construction, they would land in Kenosha. I mean, if, if it exists already, why do we have to do it here? It's, is it an inconvenience of 10, 15 minutes for the corporate people? Oh, you want to hear the worst? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to hear the worst? Yes. They've built an, a helipad at Abbott Park yes. so they can lift them up at Abbott Park and bring them over to the Waukegan Airport oh, rather than have them have to drive down Route 43. Oh, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> you can't save them a The price tag they put on this was the one they presented to the Forest Preserve meeting back in July yeah. 21. Uh, by the time they get around to this, well, they presented that this year, I think, before their estimates were around 130 million. I, I don't know exactly when they switched to 186 million. But they did present that number at the meeting. I think when they told you guys it was 186, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so they did update it for the meeting about six months ago. Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, they did. Just out of curiosity, how much is that We can't get an answer. Okay. And this I, environmental study, they keep delaying it. I will guarantee you, I've been around government long enough, first as a reporter, and then as a politician, and then as a banker. And let me tell you, they're gonna all of a sudden be ready for this public hearing about mid-February. The coldest, darkest, most miserable time to get as few people as possible. They were supposed to do it in June, July, August, September. They're just delaying it all out. And, and where she's right, there should be a series of them. There should be one here. There should be one in Waukegan. There should be one somewhere out in Gurney. Yes. And there should probably be one somewhere in the Wadsworth area. Because let anybody be there as easily as possible. You would never say, I hold one district meeting a year, take it or leave it. You'd never get reelected. In my opinion, it should be all around the county. Yeah, yeah. It should not just yeah. be here. Because it's coming for us. I agree. I, I'm sorry. I like both of you ladies very much, <laughs> but I have to point out that when you're doing something for the forest preserve, you put up a sign that says habitat restoration, and you do newsletters and you tell people you are doing this. You're inviting people to open meetings about Hunt Club Road and Stern School Road. You're doing all kinds of communication all of the time. Where has there been communication from the county board on this? Well, first of all, it's not the county board. Well, it's, 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 the, it's, it's the forest it's preserve. It's, it's, it's the same, but, the same but it's just, I'm just saying. 
we don't have a newsletter just, like we do, right, Linda? Oh, like, no, of yeah. course, preserve stuff goes in your county letter. Well, we can yeah, mention it. You guys are much more open. That's why it was yeah. ridiculous to make you go in a secret yeah. room. Yeah. <laughs> There was about two more questions, and we should probably. Yeah. There's cookies here, and Larry is denying it. Yeah, the so I want to answer to the next question. Yes. Interest reserve is funded from my property tax. Yes, ma'am. Yes. How can they sell something I bought? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I agree with you, but there is provisions in the law that they can dispose of property. So. It probably we need to talk to our legislators to change that law because it doesn't seem right. It's really, it's really our grandkids' property. It's not ours. And you know, we talked about the government's going to pay this. The government, you know, that's us, right? Exactly. It's <laughs> yeah. coming out of my pocket no matter what. Wow, are you smart? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, it's just this guy from the Forest Reserve, who by the way is a private contractor. He goes to these meetings and says, well, don't worry. And, and tonight we had a fellow at the meeting, and, and when he was then, you pressed him, right? Yes. And when he, you said, well, what if you have to come up with money? So, well, don't worry, you're pretty little heavy. He didn't say that. But basically, that's his view. It's like, just don't worry about it. I think two more questions. One was Barbara. Well, I just wanted to say, so the International Environmental Protection Act, which regulates this hearing that they have to have, the very minimum that they have to do, which is what they're gonna do, is not really a hearing. We've been fighting for you to get a real hearing. Thank what the you. EPA does when they have a hearing is they don't have, the FAA, the Florida Authority, everybody has to sit up front and we go to a microphone, we can put questions in writing or we can ask the questions. And they, have to, and they have to respond to our questions there or in writing. That's a real hearing and you learn from it. You get to say, why aren't you using the EMAS system, right? What they're gonna do is what the tollway does, it's an open house. And they have these lovely displays all around and Carol Merrill and some engineers show you how lovely it's gonna be. It's not a real hearing and that's what you're gonna get. We're still fighting, we've asked Congressman Schneider to help us. It's a sales job. Actually, I was on the tollway when they raised the fees. I was the low no low. Uh, they refused to have any hearings until I found an obscure law and it required them to. The last question here. Yeah, your court, I'm one of the ones in I'm one of the ones that the airport wants my property. They box. No, they want. Oh, they, they talk to me. They talk to me. Said up here or down I'm here? The, I'm the, I'm the very end one. I'm, yeah. I'm the last property that they want. When I met with them, they said, we will give you fair market value. <laughs> I've got five days. We're not talking replacement cost because it's going to cost me oh, way more right. than what they're going to cost. And the thing is, I wanted to replace my deck this year, but I'm not going to spend sixteen thousand dollars to do this right. when I have no idea what they're going to do because there's no way I would ever get that money back out. Right. Well, that's the problem they have back there. Do they had a bedroom or not? You know, the kids will be 42 years old and still talking about it. Well, I, I went to meetings for when Commonwealth Feathers uh, properties are sold. They wanted to put a junkyard there. We were fighting that. And we, we stopped the junkyard. And we had a big party at one of the neighbor's house. The Forest Preserve guy knew about, at that time, I think that was in around 2000 or something. So they did. They want the forest preserve property. We'll never give it to them. And now we're voting, yeah. having votes by the new people. Yeah, we'll, we'll give it to them. Well, it's not it's not decided yet. Yeah, that's why they still decided. have one more vote. Yeah. Hopefully by then, some sanity will prevail. Even vote on it. Well, here's the deal on the forest preserve that's kind of unfair to the board members. The executive director of the Forest Preserve in a job interview, like eight or nine years ago in Florida, said in his resume, I'm working with the Waukegan Airport to expand the airport. He was executive director and I've got a clipping from the Lakeland, Florida newspaper. And yet, these guys were just kind of informed in the last year what's going on. So this has been very hush-hush unless you were in the know. 
Uh, you know, we want to thank all you for coming out. This started with four of us, and it has been building, and we think that if we continue to raise questions, we can get them to do the airport modern, make it look good. They can do everything they need to take care of our corporations. We can still have our 52 acres sucking up CO2 and making our air a little better. Our kids can be better off. They're not even requiring in their study soundproofing of the schools near this site. Uh, that, that should be a minimum requirement. And the last thing that really aggravated me, I went on the rules and they said the only a 42.5 number for the decibel level at the airport. I said, how can that be? And they said, well, we take the noise and divide it by 24 hours. Well, you know, they're not using planes much at night. So what they do is it's, it's deafening you at 9.30 in the morning, but we divide that by 24 and get it down from 90 to 42. So the Fed regulations are pretty bizarre. Yes, the most key was for them to do it. And they said, oh, we do it on average. And I got their original notes. And they said, this is what it is that you're talking to YouTube videos. I said, what did you check? And they told me, I don't know what kind of a bowl they told me, but they didn't check it with the decimal meter. And I said, then how in the hell did you check the sound levels? Well, now they've lost that math. If you'd make a contact. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have to leave the room so we can get out of here. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay, folks, it's about an hour and, uh, wow, hour 21 minutes. So, anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I hope I get it on uh, YouTube first, and I'll get it on Facebook. And I they did some good discussions tonight. So, okay, everybody, get me out.